I just finished my other swap and now I'm doing another swap. How did I get into two swaps? Um, long story short, there was somebody who got left out and I felt like that's not cool. I want everybody to be included that wants to be included. So I volunteered to do a second swap. And so now I have to do two swaps. Not a problem. I had an idea. They like Ruby Star. I'm like, cool. I thought I was going to use the Hurdy. However, for the design that I really want to go for, the Hurdy has two different uh, ratio triangles. I believe it's like, oh, I forget. I forget. And the Hurdy is right behind me. The elongated one is beautiful. And I wanted to use it, but it's one inch, it's one inch wide. And I just don't have time <laughs> to piece that small. So I bought a jelly roll. I don't like buying jelly rolls. Have a jelly roll. Need to use that jelly roll because it's Ruby Star. It's, it's for her. It was specific. I also bought some background yardage. Can't use the hurdy because it's like one by six, which is what I wanted. But that's okay. I have a three to one ratio block lock and a block lock is actually going to be faster for me to piece with because I can trim it way faster so I grabbed my handy dandy block lock um, instructions do not throw away your instructions guys thank god that I have a manual folder went straight there found it I can't get a one by six but I can get a one and a half by four and a half with out of a two and a half inch strip so that's what I'm going to have to settle on. I'm going to have to be okay with it. I've decided that I am and I'm getting ready to get cooking. So I need a lot of these. <laughs> I'm doing 15. I think I'm doing 15 um, rows. I am. So this one is going to measure 22 by 22, but it's going to be a lot of work. I think I've got about 80 half rectangle triangles in this, but it's okay because I sew fast but with this block lock, I can trim fast. So that's the whole spiel. I'm getting ready to go pull out these half rectangle triangles and this yardage. And I'm going to do some quick calculations to figure out exactly how many I can get from each um, strip. And then we are going to go like the wind because we don't have a lot of time to get these things done. We have 22 days. Actually, I think I'm down to 21 days before quilt, uh, before quilt con, which is when the swap happens. So we've got to go. Doing my test run right now. I have just cut one strip. I can get four out of the strip. I should probably be writing this down because remembering the things is not my gift. I like that these don't have deep pinked edges. That makes me happy. This is going to be so boho. So though, huh? okay. I'm just gonna grab one strip. This is a pretty jelly roll, right? And it's a little jelly roll. It's not a full jelly roll. Hopefully, I won't need a whole big full jelly roll. We'll see. I'm just gonna grab this guy here. Move these guys. This is by Melanie Miller, Melody Miller. People love them some a Ruby Star. It's such a, a vibe and I'm actually very excited to be working with it. I feel like I don't use it enough. Every now and then I am in a boho kind of mood. They have those big chunky um salvages that people love to quilt with and use so I am cutting a seven and a half inch strip and we will see how many we get I should get the same amount as I just got that's one and there are two in each of these. So we're just going to see what we get. And then we've got this one that's left over. We're gonna open it up. And press it. 
something to remember about these is these are not one-sided so here although I have pressed these this way to the left now that I think about it I've got these two here that are the same and then these two here that will be the same <laughs> now look we have angles that are going opposite directions which is not a problem you just got to remember that that's what's happening I'm going to do the same thing for these here but I just got to remember this is going angle to angle, tip to tip. So I have cut eight of those strips and I have more of angle B as in boy, which is the one that goes this direction, than I do the others. And now it's all about just strip piecing. So every background triangle is going to get a this triangle and all the B's will match up with all the B's and the way that you do this is you put them together but you're gonna want to offset them by about a quarter of an inch that's way too much by about a quarter of an inch put right sides together and sew down and you're gonna do that for all of those strips and then I'm going to press them to this color and then trim them. And that's going to be this entire quilt. So it's not difficult in that sense. But again, offset by about a quarter of an inch. That's a little bit too big. Too much. There we go. But don't worry because there's a lot to trim off with these guys. So you don't have to worry about making sure that it's an exact. Because there, there again is going to be a lot of trimming. We've already seen that. And I'm just going to sit here and just chain piece like the Dickens. I can't wait. Nothing better than doing a whole bunch of chain piecing. Very, very easy. So we have about 60 pieces because I have, I think, 30. I think I have 30 there and 30 there. So it'll be like 60. I think that we're, I think we're doing 60. We shall see. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do all the bees. I'm going to do all the bees and trim them, I think, first. So I'm going to sew them all press them all, then trim them all, and then do the same thing for the A's, I think. Let's see. It's about 9 o'clock p.m. right now. I don't know how long this is going to take me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this whole stack tonight. I don't know. Let's see. We shall see. So I thought this was going to take me, I don't know, an hour, and it didn't. <laughs> it did not at all. So I've chain pieced both of them all of them and about mm, both stacks a and b in about 30 minutes which is ridiculous but i'm just going to show you how i did it so we've got this triangle here and we're going to grab all of them are getting that background piece and we're just going to offset it by a quarter inch just a quarter inch or so and i'm going to slide it in here Drop that needle, drop the presser fit, I mean, and just let it go. And it comes out right there at that angle where both are going. And then we're going to do another one, right sides together. We are going to over just a but about. Not an exact science. Again, these are going to be trimmed down tremendously top to bottom. And again, we're chain piecing, so I did not break the thread. And we're just going to keep going. And it comes out 
just about right right there and I've just got a few more to go and yes it is a weird angle but see that that's a, a strange angle it looks funny but that is what we're working with And that's that, chain piecing. Now we have all of these chain pieced um, pieces. My girlfriend asked me the other day if this was worth buying. She was asking about the Gypsy Quilters one. And I'm like, for me, it does make sense to have one because I do a lot of chain piecing. So I just did, I don't know, 80 of these. It is nice for me. For everybody else, well, you have to make it make sense. But for me, this guy here, you just throw your old rotary blade in there and it makes it so much easier. Now we're going to press these open and get them trimmed. So now that we have cut all of these apart, I am going to lay this with the background color up because I'm gonna press everything to that side. I'm gonna hit it once just to set the seam. Then we're gonna take it and roll it back with our fingers and just kind of train it where we want it to go. And now we can press it. Now we're going to use a block lock, which is amazing. We should probably do one more of these so I can show you the block lock far away and up close. So officially, this is the B side. You can tell because it's going this way and this angle is going this direction. I'm going to place this here and it says seam allowance on this side. So I know that this dark burnt orange color I press the seam that direction. So now I'm going to come down. I'm just riding the seam. It's just locked into place. And I know that I'm cutting all these to two by five. So I can see that I have more than two here on both sides. So I have something to trim. And I have way more than five on the top and the bottom. And this feels like a good place to go on ahead and trim. So I'm going to trim up this side and then I'm going to trim across the top. And because this locks on, it's just faster. You're not, you can move, you can wiggle. It's just a fast trim. So I'm going to rotate this guy. Then I'm going to pull it all the way down to, till it says two by five and it's even. So I'm on the line, the two and I'm on the line at the five and I'm going to go up. And I'm going to come down across the way. All right. So that was nice and easy. And now I have a two by five. Now I'm going to bring us in and do that again so that we can really see what on earth is happening here. Okay. Let's get all that out of our way so you don't have to be seeing all of that. Again, it tells you at the bottom, seam allowance on this side, and it says three by one up there. So I'm going to put that down. The seam allowance has been pressed to this side. So we'll place this down here. I'm going to place this on, and you can see it locks. It locks on that seam that runs this direction. Now, I am going to pull this down. I can see my line that's two right here and my line five that's going this way. 
I'm going to keep pulling it down until I see fabric on this side and fabric on the other side of the two. Can you see that? We've got fabric on this side and on that side. I think this is a good place to cut and I've got more fabric than five for sure down here and more fabric hanging up up there. So we are going to trim. And remember, it's locked on that seam. So those two cuts were taken. Now we are going to put our hands at the diagonals and I'm just gonna spin it. Ooh. All right, so it's still locked on that. We're gonna go back in again. Now I'm gonna pull this down. It's just riding the seam. I'm gonna pull, 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 pull until this is lined up perfectly on the two and perfectly on the five. So this line is on the two, that's on the five. Two and the five. And then we're gonna cut again. Cut up the right and cut across the top. And now I have another B side. For the A side, it's gonna be a little more tricky. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so for the A side, it's a little different. We've got the A side sitting up here and the seam allowance should be on the left-hand side. So we're gonna pop it in that way and we're gonna lock it. If you're left-handed, this works out great because you're gonna pull this down and you can just shoot, shoot, and the same thing as we did with the right-handed. However, this is one of those rare occasions when being left-handed benefits you in the craft world. I know, left being left-handed is a thing. Okay. So, we're going to do the same thing, although now it is long ways for me. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ride this seam until I have more than two on both sides and more than five on both sides. And I think this is a good place to take a cut. So, I'm going to go up the right and down the left or down the top. Then we are going to just rotate it and we are going to lock it there and we're going to go right down till it's exactly on the two right there and exactly on the five and make sure that it's full down the center. I am going to cut up this side here and down the top. And there I have a beautiful two by five half rectangle triangle. Let's see if we can't get a little closer. And we can. So here's another one. Again, the seam is on that side. So we're going to start with this way. And I'm just going to move it around till that seam locks. And I'm gonna ride this seam down until we have more than two. Here's a two. And then more than five, which is down here. Can you see that? More than two, more than five. So I'm just going to Take this cut and across the top. Nice and easy. Now I'm going to rotate this and we're going to pull this down just like this until we get all the way down to the bottom here where it's exactly on the two and exactly on the five. 
And we will take two more cuts. Barely anything on the top. And there we have another beautiful half rectangle triangle. Now we're about to go do this a whole bunch and we'll be done with that part. <laughs> So, um, half rectangle triangles and a lot of them, I have laid them out kind of in a scrappy kind of feel. I just wanted to make sure that the focal triangle was surrounded by pinks. Um, this definitely gives all the boho feels. I pieced together the first row and now I need to press it and look at how look at the shrinkage isn't that just craziness and I just I didn't press between I'm not doing all that who is running back and forth to the machine I mean I know some people put their stuff on the side and they just turn and press it not today not I so what I'll be doing I, I can't make up my mind if I want to just press these open or if I just want to press them to the side I'm not sure how much work I want to do <laughs> Because we all know pressing things open. But if I press them open, it's going to look so flat. And because of the way that I want to quilt it, I might find that to be a better option. We'll find out together what happens with that. Isn't that just a trip? How it just shrinks down? All right. So now we got to do the rest of these rows and then put them together and we will have a quilt. So... I have finished piecing this bad boy and it looks pretty good um, a lot of work a lot of pieces but I'm thinking about adding one more row on this side because I want to do something different on the back yes I should be done no I'm not done because I'm me and doing too much or doing extra is just kind of who I am so I think I'm gonna add one more row on this side just so that I have enough room to do what I want to do on the back um yeah but piecing this it was pretty you know it's cool everything is flat on the back I pressed everything open everything is pressed open um which is a lot of work in itself but hey with what these half rectangle channels you know it's going to be a lot of bulk and I know that the way that I want to quilt this, I don't really want to take any chances in that way. So, no worries. I'm going to add another row, so I need to do another. And I have that jelly roll. I still have some strips left over. Not a big deal. I need to do five more. Um, a couple in one angle and a couple in another. And we will be... It's not a big deal. We are still on track on time to do... All these crazy things still so we're all right but yeah I'm gonna do instead of this being a square it's gonna be a rectangle which I actually well I wanted this to be a square but it's gonna be a rectangle and it's gonna be cool because again I've just decided to write this very second that we're gonna do something kind of cool to the back so let's get to it so for the back of our ruby star i am gonna try something a little different a little old it's not really different for me it's just we're going back to what we know <laughs> what we used to do i'm gonna piece the back i want the back to be special um she's special and i had an idea and i've been wanting to use this pattern for a while and this is the perfect time to do it because i don't need to make a full quilt of it and i just needed a little kiss of something right so I printed this out on my printer, regular, actually this is my nice paper, so it's not even a thin paper. This is some real deal, it's not cardstock, but it is certainly not regular cheap paper weight, which is what you want to use. If you're printing this out on your printer, do not be trying to use your nice paper. You want to just use some old raggedy, super thin paper for this, but I didn't. This is my good paper. Oh well. What is done is done. The last three pages, six through eight. You would need to, if you were doing the full quilt, you would need to print that out these three pages 20 times. 
I just get to print them out two times, which is why I'm not scared to start this at nine o'clock at night so that I can finish this up so I can get to these other quilts that I've got to do. Oh my goodness, my um, inability to tone things back and to, to just relax a little bit and bring it down um, is showing right now. You guys won't believe how many quilts I'm going to get done. I'm not even going to question it. It's going to get done in the next couple of uh, weeks. It's going to be insane, but you guys are, we're going to do this. So these three pages are identical. We've got the pages pieces. We've got the text fabric. We have the cover fabric. This is the front. Remember that everything is in reverse. So just trust it. This is the front of the book. This is the back of the book. So it's just these three. So the first thing I am going to do is luckily I know that I need to change this blade. So I really don't care. Um, you do not use the same blade for paper as you do cutting, but this is an old blade. So I'm like, whatever at this point, I just don't care. It's nine o'clock at night. We've got to go, go, go. And this should be an easy piece. So I'm going to stop talking so much and we're going to start piecing. First thing I'm going to do is just cut out the shape. This is a very rough cut. Nothing too special here. I'm just rough cutting this so that I'm working with a smaller, more manageable piece. Make sure that none of the other pieces are underneath it. And I'm going to do that with all of the pieces. We're just going to roughly cut, not on this solid line here. We're not there yet. We're just going to rough cut. So these are the colors that I have chosen from my books. These two will be the covers of the books. These are Ruby Star. I think these are Rashida's. Um, these are Rashida. Rashida Fabrics. People love Rashida. People love Ruby Star. And I'm so excited to be getting a chance to use some of it. These are my favorites by Ruby Star. This is, this I do use on a regular basis. And it is called Speckled. So this is the background. So the whole background will be this. The spine of the book will be this. The covers of the book will be this. And somewhere in here, I don't know where it just went. Just like that, I just lost fabric. How did I, where did you go? Oh, and inside here. And these will be the pages. Very excited about that. Really excited about how all these colors are going to play and how it's going to work with the front of the quilt. And we're going to see how big this is and how, if I need to extend that, the quilt size. So again, these are the covers. These, this is going to be the pages. This is going to be the spine. And this is going to be the all over background. Now I'm going to get to paper piecing. So I'm going to need to get a few of my special friends and then we can get to it. Say hello to my little friends. This is an add a quarter ruler. It's got that quarter inch ridge right there. And then the side of this is down to a sloped edge, which is a modified design from the original, which did not have that sloped edge, but I always was like, dude, make this a sloped edge. So now that we have it, and this is just a glue stick, just a washable glue stick. I like to use it. It's not necessary, but it helps. So we are going to start with, let's start with the, the tiny pieces, the ones with three. Because the more, you know, we start with the hardest first. With me, I try to start with the hardest first with most of my projects. So I see that the, it says background fabric, background fabric, text fabric. The text fabric is, again, the white fabric. It's going to be like your, your book text. And I need these two. So I'm going to grab them and cut some pieces and then we will go. I purchased about, I'd say, two yards of this. I believe that one yard will be enough for the backing. Um, but I'm just going to take an eight and a half inch cut for all of these pieces. I think that might be a little generous, but I'm a generous paper piecer. So that's very generous. I really don't need to take that much. I could probably take six inches. Let's start with six inches and see if I can get away with that around six inches or so.
I'd like to keep the rest of this intact a little bit. We're going to try to keep this yardage intact. I believe that one yard is enough to do that backing, but just in case it's not, let's just be a little bit frugal with the fabric for a second, which is unlike me. <laughs> but I know that the quilt currently is 22 inches, so I would need like 32 inches to do to quilt it the way that I want to. And so that's a little less than a yard. Anyway, okay, grab the background fabric. I think I'm going to give this just a little press and stiffen this fabric up just a little bit with my quilting spray, my favorite quilting spray. So I'm a little out of practice with foundation piecing. Not too out of practice, but out of practice. I haven't done it in a while. First thing I'm going to do is put this down and give it a little crease on the fold. Just so I know where the folds are. Looks good. Now it's telling where the background fabric is. It's telling me which pieces to piece first. So first is going to be the F1 and the F2. I believe I have a video on my channel about how to piece, which would be lovely for you all. If I can remember where it is and tag it so that I don't have to be trying to explain this right now as I'm trying to move super duper quickly. So that piece will work for fabric one. That size will work for fabric one. This size here will work for fabric two. I am not being oh so careful. Yeah, fabric two. And I'm gonna cut four of those because I'm gonna assume that this size is identical and it is it's just rotated around so we're just gonna cut a couple more of these because I know that if this side does it the other side does it too one two three and four maybe I should have cut a bigger strip who knows I'm gonna just keep cutting the size pieces that I think I need for all the backgrounds because why not why not knock all that out in one fail swoop so that way I can just get to cutting I can get to piecing Now the piece is right here. I'm going to open it up this way and I'm going to drop that presser foot right there and I'm going to just sew on that line between the two, the three, the one and the three. It's the last piece because you go in order. It's okay if you go into the selvage, not a big deal. And we're gonna take it back over. So now we've just sewn through there. We are going to open this up. I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue on the back so it's not flapping around. And we are just going to fold it over and crease it. And now we have all of our pieces paper pieced. And now I just need to trim them up and clean up around here. And the way that I do that is, I'm gonna grab a Creative Grids because you know how much I love them. I'm in a Quilter Select, not a Creative Grids ruler. And now we need to trim on the line. You see how this has got these little angles? Those are not to be forgotten. So I'm just gonna Put this on the line here and here and I'm going to trim on the outermost line a 
again, I have an old blade in here, guys, not a new blade. Then I'm going to take this angle. Then I'm going to take that other little weird angle. And then there is a straight angle here on this side. And we're going to take that angle off. And we're going to take off this here. And then we're going to make another weird angle. It's not straight. It's these little notches that help you get some more precision when you're putting them together. And there we have a trimmed piece in a lot of trash. So I'm going to show you one more. I'm going to show you the big piece. And that's what it looks like from the front. Okay. I'm going to show you this big piece. So from the front, you can see that there are some little white spots here. But I'm not worried about those. Because I know that this piece is big enough. Well, let's make sure we move this piece way out of the way. This is for the scrap pile. This is not. Okay. And we're going to take our first cut. And rotate this like this straight cut here again I'm cutting the outermost line the other line is going to be your sew line now every pattern is different some people have a dash line where they want you to sew some people have a dash line where they want you to cut but usually you're cutting on that outermost line when you are paper piecing all right now we got this funky angle up here at the tip so I'm going to do it this way a little baby turn and take off this little edge here and now that guy is done and this is what the front or the back of the book looks like I don't know it looks like it's the back it's the front okay see how that tip is flapping around I don't enjoy that at all I'm gonna go oh, guru oh, oh. There we go. Okay, I am going to finish all these up. Let me just give you a close up of that angle that I keep talking about where I'm nipping at it at little, little sections there. It's just a weird angle. All right, I'm gonna trim up all these pieces, toss this stuff and just get ready to piece it together. So I'm working on assembling these. Remember that everything is backward <laughs> so it's gonna seem a little funky but this is actually the front cover of the book which is going over here and this looks good so I'm gonna flip it over and this goes this away and this goes this way and we have a nice rectangle block <clears throat> So I'm going to piece this to this, and then this to this to this section, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So these two are going to go together like that. 
probably be better if it was right sides together. <laughs> Which we flip this over. There we go. And flip this over. And here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. That's gonna go like that. And this is gonna go like this. There we go. And I'm gonna sew down that line. Now, if you've lined this up right, you should be hitting, starting and stopping right there, and riding that line. Looks pretty good. And then we'll just fold you back. And we see we've got a, a line there and a pretty good line right there. So now we're going to put these right sides together. And sew down this line. So I've sewn down that line and I'm pretty good. And we are just going to open this up. And there we have the cover. And that, of course, is going to go on this side. I'm going to do the same thing for these other sets. And then I'll show you the spine. The spine is a simple. Oh. Huh. I caught the selvage in the spine. Love when I do stuff like that. I'm glad that I noticed it, so that's a no-go. But we've got a strip here and then a strip here that will go in the center. Easy peasy, as long as you don't catch the selvage. See, Ruby Star has these lovely decorative selvages, but boy, do they sometimes get in the way. All right, so all of the papers are still in, and I think, oh crap, I still need to recut that spine, don't I? That wasn't right. Um, I'm gonna pull the papers before I put the spine in. No sense in adding to the confusion of paper and more fabric and all the things. Why would we do that? So I'm gonna cut one more spine piece. So here, we're just going to cut off a strip real quick. And we're going to cut that down to size. Somebody's going to get a lovely scrap basket. Um, I'm just tossing all these, <laughs> all these big pieces in the scrap basket, but you know, when am I ever going to use another piece of yellow speckled? Okay, I could probably use that. I should take that out the scrap basket. Okay. All right, now we have two of these. And I'm just going to right sides together these. Boy, this looks pretty with that. Oh, I can't wait to put... I'm going to put her name in one. And I don't know what the other one's going to say. I haven't thought of something cute or, you know, kind of kitschy or whatever. I got to... I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm going to gently pull these papers out. And yes, I've used glue and I am just going to just boop, boop, just like that. Just, it's not difficult. Just loosen it up a little bit, fold on that line. And if you have shortened your stitch length properly, it should be perforated and just come right off. You can add a little water to it. Um, Carolina Moore has a water pen that probably does work very well and then I just peel it back and that pops out and then I just do a little trimming here They're not trimming but just some careful tears that's all I shortened my stitch length to about a 1.5 between a 1.5 and a 1.8 and I really don't have much trouble I've seen people use a wheel, a pattern wheel, to, to do this. Um, do whatever, just get the papers out, guys. Try not to rip your fabric, try not to put a hole in it. Your stitch length should be shortened to also keep it nice and tight. But just pull them out. They have some that you can do this with that you can leave in. I prefer those, but 
that's not what we have today. You can use your tweezers to pop stuff out, whatever you need to do. I'm going to tear all the papers out, then I'm going to press this, trim it to size, put the spine in. Let's do it. So here we are with oh, the two backing, took two book backings, and the spine just goes in here. Um, I pressed that seam open because it seemed like the right thing to do. I just don't want to add any more bulk to this because there's a lot of fabric coming together right here and I don't want to add any more confusion to it. And this actually doesn't line up with that. It, it's supposed to be a little bit above it. I was looking at the pattern very closely. So I'm going to pin this in place and then we'll be done with the actual blocks. Then I need to set them and figure out how big of a sashing I want here. And then I'm gonna blow this up and make this the backing to the Ruby Star half rectangle triangle front um yeah that's about to happen right now so i'm gonna go right sides together and get to pinning so these types of moments are when i do too much because i'm me and you guys have met me before so i could do them side by side which would make sense to most people. But I'm thinking about just making it askew a little bit just to do it. Um, I have a pretty big square to work with, so I've got 22, at least 22 and a half inches this way, up and down. And then I have, I will extend the, the quilt, whatever I need, uh, right or left. So right now I think it finishes at 22 and a half. I would at least need to do two or three more on this side, two or three more additional rows, which I don't mind doing. They really don't take very long at all, as we found out. So I don't want this to extend more than 24 inches, I don't think. Do I? No. Uh, I'm honestly not sure what I want to do. If I bring them down like this, I can, I would feel more comfortable putting them together. Matter of fact, I could really, I could really give it a little something. Now nah, let's bring it back down a little bit. I could put them closer together without such a large sashing, which is what I think we are going to do. I was thinking about if I did them side by side, I could put a cute title up here, but Again, doing too much as usual. Just, <laughs> just knock this out. We have so much more to do to this to this wall hanging actually. So, yeah, I think I am going to put a small sashing right here. Make them askew. Throw some cute names in these in these uh, bindings and maybe on the front cover and call it a day. And we're gonna move on. Okay, break. So I'm looking at the size of this and it looks like it's measuring 24, which I'm surprised because I don't think, I thought it was supposed to measure 22 and a half, but obviously I must have been, you know, my math wasn't mathing. So this looks like it measures 24 and the backing right now is measuring around 23 and like a quarter <laughs> so okay I might be able to I think I might be able to work with this I might extend I still might make the top a little bit larger um, maybe maybe we'll see maybe but I have pressed this as flat as I can get it because again I'm gonna try some tricky quilting because I'm me and I want to see what I can do. So I think I'm going to add vinyl to the strip here. I'm not going to embroider. Even though I can embroider. I'm not going to do that. 
but I'm going to add some vinyl here. I think I'm going to add some vinyl there. And maybe, we'll see. But I'm certainly going to add something in at least one of these spines, if not both of these spines. And then after that, it's time to quilt. Quilt, quilt, quilt. So, yeah, that's where we are. This came out looking nice. I'm pleased. It looks really good. I think if I were doing this actual pattern, I as opposed to having all the books line up side by side, I think I would do this. This just feels... It feels nice. It feels right. I like this. All right, guys, I'm calling it a night, and tomorrow I will add the borders and whatnot and then figure out how to quilt it. Okay, so this is where we've left off with this guy. I need to repress it. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little not pressed, but I have finally weeded, and all that means is that I have taken the background off of these and cut them with my Cricut. Took a little longer than I anticipated, guys took a little bit longer than I than I anticipated but this is gonna actually go on this one and it's gonna go like that once I press it out real good that's gonna be so cute and then this is gonna go like this And then this one here will go. Why am I putting it at an angle? Because it just would be weird to just put it straight up and down. It, I feel like it should go with the angle of the um, of this book. I just think straight up and down is just not very realistic. You don't see things straight up and down when you, if somebody's reading a book, you know, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, but we got to make sure that we have enough room for a quarter inch there and we do. And this one's going to tilt a little bit more, but I like that. I love this image that I came up with. I mean, I didn't come up with it, but I found it. And I love that I just altered it and dropped it right there. So that looks good. Can't wait. So I have my fabric here. And I have a Cricut pressing mat on top of my... Um, wool mat just to protect the surface. I have this machine set to 305 degrees for 12 seconds and I'm just going to heat this up for a few seconds then I'm going to place down my image and we'll go from there. So we're just going to heat this up and that was just three seconds just to take the moisture out I guess. Now I'm going to place this where I want it. It has already been pieced top and bottom, so I think we're good to go here either way. The other one has not been completely pieced, so. All right. I like how that looks. We are going to hit the button and place it down and hold it. I'm gonna hit it again up here. I think that should be good. Now they say you can peel it hot or cold. Let's see what we got, if we got action. It's coming up pretty good. I probably could have done a few more seconds. Now I'm just going to stick this guy here and see what we are working with. I like it. And 
It says Quilts Are Magic. There's a bookstore called Books Are Magic that she is into. And so I just switched out the words a little bit. And you know what? I think quilts are kind of magical. All right, I'm going to actually use a uh, sheet here. And I'm going to put this over here and just give it a good press. Okay. Just gave it a few more seconds. I think we're gonna up our time to 15 seconds on that. Yeah, it likes it a little hotter. We're going to give this sucker right here just a little bit more heat. And I think we will be good. Good to go. This is so pretty. And this foil kind of gives it the same kind of foil vibe that's in the in Rashida's um, speckled. There's a copper that this goes with. I know you guys are like, what's with that gold and copper? Well, you know what? That's what we were feeling here. Perfect. Now she's down and she's hot. All right. So cute. I hope you guys can see it. Yes, it's busy, but it's a thing. You know, it's it's got a vibe. Now let's do the other side. So for this side, we need to be a little bit more careful because we've got a quarter inch here that's going to get eaten up. And then the bottom of this will get taken off. So we need to be sure that we are accounting for that. I'm just gonna heat this up for a few seconds, like we did before. Now we are going to place this guy here. My absolute favorite one. And I'm just trying to make sure he's straight. I love this. So she's also into yoga. And you guys, this is what I mean when I talk about stuff being couture. This is made with her in mind. Um, you know, we know things about her. We are just customizing and going the extra mile on our projects. You know, doing too much. <laughs> Story of my life. Always doing too much. All right, let's get it. Oh, let's do the carrier sheet. Or the protective sheet. Because we're going to let it sit a little bit longer. needs a little more let's give it just a smidge more all right so we've peeled that up that's cool we're just going to make sure that we're out of this quarter inch seam here and just trying to line it up with the angle of the the book that looks pretty good just eyeballing 
And again, she likes yoga. So this says quilting is yoga for your fingers. <laughs> All right. And then we'll press this and then we will figure out how big the backing needs to be. And that will be that. All right, so th this is all finished, which is great. Now I'm looking at it in um, relationship to the top quilt. So of course, since this is the back, it needs to be made much larger. And I need about, I want five inches on each side, top and bottom. Even though I'm quilting it on a domestic, I still want that much extra fabric on either side. Um, and trying to line this up is going to be an extra challenge that I don't need, but I'm going to do it because this is couture. We're going the extra mile. So again, I'm going to add about six inches on this side, six inches on this side. I will probably need to do at least, I don't know. Well, I'm going to do the sides first, get them much larger, and then I will do the top and the bottom. Um, and we'll see what we're really working with here because after that we will base this sucker to some batting I think I'm going to do a little bit of hand quilting because again what are we doing if we're not doing too much right this needs to get a nice strong press but first things first make the back bigger so I'm going to do the edges first I'm going to cut six and a half inch strips, maybe even seven inch strips on either side. And then I'll do the top and the bottom. So this is the library quilt and it is all done too. I love the way that this looks. Um, it's got books. <laughs> it's got library books on it, which I think is so cool. Um, let's see here. You can see the books better on the back. We've got the beautiful um, lettering here. And I think it just, it came out really, really nice. I am pleased. So... Now I'm just going to trim this guy up and throw a binding on it. I think I'm going to put the rust color from the front as the binding. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Yep, I think we're going to, I could, nope. Yep, we're going to bind this in this rust color and that'll be that.